Okay, so what I have here, oh, I want to show you this. I have this, and this is what I use, the glue I use to glue my plants onto the wet wood. I don't buy the special hobbyist glue. I use this stuff. It's called Rapid Fuse. You buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot, and it seems to work just fine. You buy a big bottle of this. It's not that expensive. It within 30 minutes, but all those plants I glued using this glue here. So you don't have to buy that special expensive tubes of hobbies glue. You could just use this what they call rapid fuse. It says on there sets in 30 seconds. And I use this is the same glue I use for the plenum in my other video to glue the bubbler on top of the under gravel filter plate. If you watch that, this is the exact glue I used, okay, to adhese that together. And I used it in this aquarium when I bought the plants, just to put a little dab of glue and then put the plant on top of it. Even though the wood was wet, it still held on. So it's this is what I use. You know, if you want to buy the specialty glue from aquarium store and pay more for it, that's totally up to you. But... Now, since this is what I have, th this right here, this is Innovative Marines. This is a dosing or a dosing system for topping off your aquarium. They basically, I bought this. It's expensive. You can actually reverse engineer this right here. And use a five gallon aquarium or 10 gallon aquarium, buy a glass slit, it'll be a lot cheaper than buying this innovative marine system here. Uh, if you look at the price of this, this is about in line with other people's prices that they have when you buy a, a system like this to automatically top off. Uh, it has a Tunzi. Uh, pump in there to bring it back into aquarium. Uh, Osmolator, the Tunzi right there. I'll do a review on that. I would not recommend you buy that. There's a lot cheaper ones at half the price that are going to work just as well because it uses a float switch. But you know, uh, when I bought that Tunzi, Tunzi a long time ago used to be a great product. You know, it's top of the line German product. And after looking at that, I thought, yeah, that, not for the price. But I have a small little pump in here, and it keeps the water circulating. So you could open this up. It has a hole in the back of it. You can undo this. This top piece here. This is the way it comes. Innovative Marine. Innovative Marines, and by the way, is... Uh, I want to buy one of their aquariums because they make an aquarium that's 36 deep by 4 foot wide by uh, 19 inches high, okay, and with an aluminum stand. I think that's what I'm going to buy for my lanai. But anyhow, this pulls out, and this has a hole in it. So when you pull this out, it stops. This little screw here goes down and it, it will stop it and you just dump your water in here to fill this up. Now this is five gallons. Anyhow, this is how it comes. It, it's it's nicely done. I'll admit that. It's very well built. It's a little expensive but it's not out of line with a lot of the other products that are out there that do the same thing as, as this one does. And I'll have to admit that that uh, they're all kind of expensive unless you just you can reverse engineer this and actually um, make it yourself. I added this on. This is just a plastic ruler I added on so I can measure how much in inches does this thing go down per day because uh, when I go away, this keeps feeding the tank and keeps the water level perfect because it has a float switch in the back and of course they have a little device here on the side 
that makes sure that uh, it doesn't overfill the aquarium. But I'll get more on that later. And I got a little bitty circulation pump just to keep things circulating. Because what I do is I add my iron and everything else. That's why it's colored, as you see, yellow. Because I add my iron and everything into here. And when this goes on, I've timed it. It lasts, when it goes on to top off, once that flow switch goes down in the wear, it tops off the wear as the water level starts going down. Well, the thing about it is I've timed it over and over again. Five to seven seconds, that's all it stays on. Within five to seven seconds, it shuts down because it has filled up the wear to where it's supposed to be. In fact, ever since I've been talking with this video, it's never even turned on. But because this carries the iron and all the nutrients, that means it is feeding this aquarium all day long whenever it does turn on. And it doesn't turn on except every so many hours. It will just turn on for five to seven seconds. And I notice that that's more than enough fertilizer for the aquarium. So what I do is that if it says like for this tank, 60 gallons, cap full, I may put like one cap full or two cap fulls of iron in here, this five gallons. And if you're going to use anything else, you want to use potassium, you put whatever it recommends. Uh, let's say if you were going to use aquarium co-ops with the little squirt bottle, you would just squirt one or two squirts inside here. And that will feed your aquarium. And, of course, you you can put new water in here. But that will feed your aquarium little by little the nutrients it needs. So this acts as a dosing system because everything that the tank needs is in. And as you notice, this is all yellow and that's because of the iron and that there's not very much iron in there there's, there's only like I said a cap full or two of iron and I've already filled this up with fresh clean water and look at the color of it so this will be, then go into the aquarium and feed the aquarium little by little every single day that's why I said if you don't have something like this a top-off system which you can make yourself, like I said. You can do the same thing by using a five-gallon aquarium, a bucket, Home Depot bucket with a lid on it, and you can buy a kit that will be a dosing system for about 50 bucks, and they give you the pump, they give you the hose, they give you your, your switch that will go inside of the aquarium, you know, your, for your top off, topping off your aquarium, and or you can do what I did, just buy one already made like this. And I think these come in 5-gallon. This is 5-gallon. I think they also come in a 10-gallon side. But I bought this just to see how it was. It's very well made, very well thought out. It's easy to fill. I don't even have to pull it out from the aquarium to fill it. And you screw this back down. There's a little screw on top of here from Innovative Marine. And now... When you pull it out, it will only go so far. And you just pour your water in here and it automatically fills this up. So what I do is I take this and I will take this container here and I will add my cap full, one or two cap full, whatever I'm going to put in here for my fertilizer. I add it in here, then I go to the sink and just fill it up. So it stirs up and then I just pour it in the top here and then it pours into here and fills this up and now I dose my plants continuously but just little by little that's what I was telling you if you use something like this you don't you can use a bigger bottle whatever you're, you're diluting it so when you do just squirt one squirt in your plants are constantly getting a little bit of fertilizer every single day so you don't overdose and like I said the biggest complaint I've always heard from hobbyists is I fertilized my aquarium and now it's all full of algae. What happened? What did I do wrong? I did everything that everybody told me. Everyone told me my plants needed more fertilizer so I gave it more fertilizer and all I did was destroy my tank. 
Fertilizers have to be added very little. And if you overdose them, all you do is just cater to the algae and not to the uh, higher order plants that can utilize it and let them utilize it first than the algae. And that's that's the whole trick. And here's the, of course, like I said, here's the little air pump that's pumping for the plenum here. And that's it. That's that's all I'm using. The cheapest Tetra air pump you can buy. So if you want to buy something like this or even make something like this, if you have a tank that loses a lot of uh, water every day, do your dosing through the container here. Put your chemicals in here, not directly into the aquarium. So every time it tops off your aquarium, it gets a little bit of dose of the iron, magnesium, and, and all your fertilizers. The same as this little squirt bottle that you only do during feeding time. As the fish are eating, you go over to the side and squirt one squirt in. You'll be able to determine if you're putting enough in or not enough in. I would only recommend to start out with it's one squirt a day. Those who maybe are using CO2 at a, a, and brighter light, maybe they're using CO2 at 30 parts per million, you may find out that you have to do a squirt once in the morning if you feed them and once in the afternoon. It's not a big deal. See, that's that's just the whole thing. When it becomes a big deal, then, then we don't want to do it anymore. If it becomes something as simple as grabbing the fish food, grabbing this, squirting one squirt in and walking away, that's not a big deal. This is this... This is something that that you'll do, and this is something that we'll do. And, of course, this just slides right on back into the tank here. And when I want to fill it, I don't even have to remove it. All I do is just pull this out, fill it, and push it back in. So, yeah, this is expensive. It's very well made. I have to admit that it is. It is nicely made. Uh, they have cushion feet on the bottom of it and everything else. I can't complain about it. It's just that it is a little pricey. If you look at the price, you're going to say, yeah, that is quite pricey. And you can reverse engineer it, like I said. If you want, you go to Petco or something, buy yourself a little five-gallon tank and a glass lid, and you can make your own. I mean, this is one of those items that... Uh, if it's so easy to make, people are just going to make it or do it themselves. Or you can use a five-gallon bucket or a ten-gallon aquarium. You could do the same thing and do that as an automatic top-off system with a pump. Like I said, the Tunzi I would not buy. I'll do a review on that, why I would not buy the Tunzi. There are other manufacturers out there that make it for half the price that Tunzi was. And you can buy one of them to top off your system. And if you're one of those people who have an open-top aquarium, and let's say you are topping off your aquarium, let's say a half a gallon a day, a gallon a day, this, this comes in handy to inject your fertilizers in. Why not utilize it? So when it tops it off, it adds a little bit of fertilizer. And, of course, the fertilizer goes into the ware, goes right through the canister filter, and this squirts it right back out. And... It seems to keep everything right at the right level without overdosing anything as far as iron. And remember, iron is really, really important for plant growth. And that's already been proven with and without iron. Like, like your lawn, uh, you could buy ironite, it's called. It comes in a bottle, a squirt bottle, or it comes in a bag that, uh, that you can put it in a spreader. And you put some of that ironite down, they, they use that like on golf courses and stuff like that. And it will really green up your grass. You'll notice that your grass gets green without putting all kinds of nitrogen on your lawn. Okay, nitrates and phosphates. So you put iron and it does the same thing. It greens up everything and makes everything pop, makes your color pop and stuff like that. Uh, uh, also the lights, but that's how... You achieve your balance in here without trying to put a bunch of nitrates and a bunch of phosphate. Like I said, 
whatever being created in this aquarium for nitrates and phosphates is more than enough for the plants. They don't need more and more and more. A lot of people will say, well, plants need nitrates. Yeah, but in trace amounts, trace amounts, they don't need, right now, uh, I just measured this aquarium for nitrates and it's not showing really any nitrates. So I know they're under uh, 20 parts per million. I know the nitrates are under that. I'd have to get my other test kits and start testing it out to see where the phosphates are going to be. But you can tell the phosphates are low, nitrates are low, because I use the phos guard and stuff in the aquarium. But there is something that, like if you use these test strips, and you use a test strip in here, you'll see that uh, how this is different than this. So you don't want to be adding pollution into your aquarium in big doses. You, If you are going to add this, you want to add it in very small doses so your aquarium can take care of what you have put in there. Then adding one big, huge dose in there, you know, whether it says a cat full squirt, that, that's what gets people in problems. It's too much, too soon, and the plants can't utilize it that quickly. But the algaes can, and then they start coming up with problems, and I always get told about the problems of what's going on. I did exactly what people told me. I went on the farm, they said, I need a fertilizer, and now my tank's all screwed up. Well, you've added more fertilizers than what your plants can even utilize. You need to only add trace amounts every day. Just a little bit every day will do you good. So I wanted to show you that in, in this video that if you are adding fertilizers and maybe you're not quite 100% satisfied, maybe you are. If you are, don't change it. If you're satisfied with what you're doing, why change it? But for those of you who are not sure, this is your first time, you see your plants need it because everybody's telling you, maybe you might want to try a little trick like this, dilute the fertilizer that you're going to put into your aquarium, squirt it in once or twice a day. You're not putting much in there and see what happens. Because if you do it every day, then your your plant, as long as your plants can utilize it. And that's another problem I found out that a lot of people who wind up using fertilizers, their plants really can't utilize it because they are not performing excuse me, at 100% of their capacity. And when plants don't perform at 100% of their capacity, that fertilizer is not being utilized and taken out of the water column, and you're going to end up with algae problems. So there's another big problem you run into. You've got to make sure your plants can utilize what you're putting in there and take it out of the water column, then let it sit in there, and then you're going to start having all kinds of algae grown all over your plant leaves and everything else. So I hope the video was uh, a good one. If you need a dosing system, this Innovative Marine works quite well. <coughs> it's well made. It works just the way it's supposed to. It's just that it's kind of expensive. Saltwater hobbies, they'll probably buy it because, you know, everything in saltwater is expensive. Freshwater hobbies probably won't do it. Uh, maybe some will. I only did it because so I can do a review on it and see how well it was made. And so I can tell you, if you're a freshwater hobbyist and you're thinking about doing the same thing I did, you know, it, you got nothing better to do with your money than you can buy something like this with the pull-out drawer, fill it. It makes it convenient. It's a nice little convenient uh, way of doing it, but a five gallon tank or a bucket will do the trick also if you have the space. And sometimes people will put the dosing system on the outside of the aquarium, like the five gallon tank or a 10 gallon tank on the outside of their aquarium, and then dose it in to the aquarium. And I will show you that next, how it's being dosed into the aquarium 
so in case you want to do the same thing. So here we are on top of the aquarium and right here this tube here is the dosing system. Uh, you buy these off the internet. The uh, They're made out of stainless steel and I have it hooked up to the pump, the Tunzi pump and when this is your float switch right here the float switch so when that goes down because the water is going down this just turns on and refills this back up to where the float switch turns it on and I haven't had any problems with it doing that so this adds in the nutrients every time it fills up the aquarium of course here that is the heater and this right here is your right here this is this is a, another test product I'm doing right here this goes to a UV light and this UV light something like $21 or something like that UV lights used to be real expensive so I bought this once again off of Amazon uh, this cord here eh, my hands in the way sorry this cord here is of course your thermostat and this one is for your float switch and this one is your CO2 so I have a stainless steel tube once again with a rigid tubing going all the way to the bottom of the aquarium and I'm using the fluval ceramic stones and when I put on the mesh the top to this I had these made and they're held on by magnets or just glass and these are what take up the the space from the top and I will show you that oh here this in case you're wondering what it is this just goes to the airline going down to the uh, the bubbler that's what that is and it's just stuck onto the side with black uh, suction cups Okay, if you remember my video on the lid that I made, and I didn't cut it all out, and so that's why I had the glass made. Once again, I went to a glass place, this is tinted glass, and they beveled the edges for me. I measured it of what I wanted, so instead of having to put all kinds of legs in here, then try to get the screen on here, uh, I just made these pieces of glass that are held on with magnets so you can pull the glass up see pull the glass up anytime you want you can clean it do your maintenance and then of course put your glass back down and that's it it's tinted it's tempered to make it stronger than what it is so when I did my screen I could make my screen square to make it easier on myself than try to cut out the screen and come over now you have to cut the screen out have to tighten it up really this this was a project in and of itself just the screen here so uh, those people who are capable of doing it <laughs> good luck with that to try to get it nice and tight and taut and everything else but that's what this is this is just so to prevent fish from jumping out uh, here though there's the lid onto the wear so if fish do jump they would jump on that but I haven't had any fish jump out but it's a shame when you do have fish jump out that uh, you're losing a fish so that's why I did this put these piece of glass up so I could just make it perfectly um, not square rectangle uh, lid or whatever I don't know um, I don't think you make one of these for a round tank I think uh, it would have to be a rectangle square and I don't I don't think they sell a kit where you could get the this for maybe if you had a round aquarium I I've never seen one it's basically your square rectangle tanks that you would be making these lids here for but anyway that is uh, that's how this is set up and of course like I said this is the dosing and so far with me doing the video the dosing system hasn't even come on once so it doesn't really evaporate that much 
But when it does turn on, as I said before, when it does turn on, it only turns on for about five seconds. And you know, another thing I like, and I wanted to tell you is, I like very wide aquariums. And this 24 inch aquarium really gives you a depth, really gives you that depth that, that I like. Then if you got a 55 gallon, it's about 12 inches. This thing really gives you a depth of field of, of, of like you're looking back. And when I get the other tank, the 36 inch, you can even imagine that you'll have more depth of field there. And of course, there's the brand new moss that I just glued in. That will take a few months, but you know, I'm patient. I'll wait. No rush on anything. But uh, the plants have done pretty good. Here's some new plants coming up here. The stone you see in the center of this picture, that is actually, that stone right there is actually petrified wood. Okay, petrified wood today is very expensive to buy. But that uh, I've always used that in an aquarium. So it's worked quite well. And here's that little guy coming up. Look at that. Every day he seems to be growing more and more. And that's, that's from the crypt that you see back there. That's from the crypt. And then we got something else growing over here. This is what I like about aquariums that has always fascinated me as a kid is that the new things you find, look at that. What in the world? A new plant coming up. Look at that. What is it? I don't know yet, but we will find out in the future. Is that a plant or is that a root? We will find out what it is in the future. But there is so much like here. There's another plant coming up. Do you see it? Now you know. Look at that. Do you see it on your left? You can see that little stem coming. I don't know what that is. But it's another plant coming up from the uh, sword. And I know that's not a sword plant, but this is the, the thing I like about aquariums like this is there's always something new coming up and just makes it a little exciting to see that. You know, you don't stay in this hobby like I have for over 60 years and still don't get fascinated and excited when you see all this new, new things coming up constantly. And here... I will get into this, but this hillside loach, these are the best algae eaters out there. Do you see them? These never stop. There is a problem with them, of course, is they, uh, they've been getting them in and they've been dying. And I heard that is a big problem with these hillside loaches. They uh, are excellent algae eaters. They are probably the number one algae eater. In my book, they're the number one algae eater. They constantly, constantly are eating. They won't bother your fish like a Picosmus will. I have two of them. They're, they're not that expensive. The big problem that they're having with them is they're not living. I went to an aquarium store and she said she got 40 of them. They all died. Then she got another order of 12 or 20 of them. They all died. And the vendor said, yeah, they're having problems with them. But I bought these two once again at Petco. I bought two of them and no problems. And this tank, uh, what you read about them, all they need cold water. They need, now they, they don't. This, this is 78 degree water. They're doing just fine. You know, they live in 80, 90 degree water. Look at that guy. He just, he did, they just never stop. But anyhow, as far as algae eaters are concerned, they have to be, in my book, better than any algae eater I have ever bought, ever, to do the job. If, if you can find them, and they're not all sickly, and if you can keep them alive, they will outbeat any fish out there as far as eating algae. They just never stop eating algae. 
and they are excellent at just constantly scraping on wood. They don't destroy your plants. They don't jump on your fish and try to suck the slime off your fish. They just go to work and keep working continuously. But I also like, you know, of course, as you can see, snails. My aquarium, I, I just like having all kinds of animal life in it. And here's the new plant. We'll, we'll see this plant in about three months from now, what it's going to look like. Once again, Petco plant. And I like doing that. I like showing people, look, you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money. This is just all new plant I put on the wood, just glued it in there. And it'll do just fine for your aquarium. Just be patient. That's the big thing. Be very, very patient. And it will pay off in the long run. It's, it's like a living pitcher. And of course, you don't have to be scared of fish. That's, I think, the big thing about this. You don't have to be scared to put fish in and get so anal with fish that, oh, I got this big tank and I'm going to put little 13 neons in it and feed them every other day. I feed these guys twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. I will get into what food I use. I use uh, uh, food that's actually made for salt water, and I get it from Italy. It's, it's not inexpensive, but it's a real good food. So that's why I want to show you. You don't have to be scared. There's, there's well over close to 60 fish in this aquarium here. And I just wanted to show you, you don't have to be scared to put fish in your aquarium. That's, that's basically what you have the aquarium for is fish. And I don't want people making an aquarium where you're going to have plants and you're, you're going to be so scared to feed your fish because your tank's going to turn into an algae pit hole, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's not what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to achieve a beautiful aquarium, feed your fish, get your fish. All my fish have grown. I'm surprised though, those, uh, those tetras there how much they have grown since I've had them. And I can't wait until they get full size. Don't forget, each one of them is going to get about two inches. And they get real red, real beautiful red. And if you saw them right now, compared to when you see them at a Petco or PetSmart, you know, or at your local fish store, these things really are quite beautiful now. Their colors are. And they're only going to get better as they get older. Okay, well, that's it for now. I hope I um, helped you with maybe dosing your aquarium with fertilizer so you don't overdo it. I'm, I show you this aquarium so everyone can see step by step. It's now been over three months since this has been set up. As you can see, I'm still adding stuff to it. You never have to stop adding stuff to it. Don't be scared. All the fish now are scared. They're all hiding. You wouldn't believe there's close to 60 fish. Yeah, with the catfish and everything else, I would say close to 60 fish. Look at them. They're all hiding. I guess I scared them away. But, yeah, there's a big school in there. There's 50 of the red tetras alone to make a real nice school in there. Anyhow, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.